Yo, what's going on guys, it's Scott here, and today we're going to talk about who's been the most disappointing Lakers players this season. To start off, we have JaVale McGee, who's been awful ever since he missed 7 straight games with the flu in December. Since then, he has a 114.2 defensive rating, and a negative 9.8 net rating. And when he's off the court, the Lakers have a 108 defensive rating, and a negative 4.4 net rating. Now, it's easy to just say that had he not gotten sick, he would have continued his great form from early in the season, but really, he only had a positive defensive and net rating rating during the first month of the season. During October, he had near defensive player of the year contribution, averaging 3.3 blocks and a 101.4 defensive rating. Apart from those first eight games in October, he has been underwhelming even before he got sick. Between November and when he was out, he had a 106.2 defensive rating, which is pretty good, but the team had 100.7 defensive rating when he was off the court. Then his net rating was at negative 2.6, and the team's net rating was 6.4. Around the time of Tyson Chandler signing was when we started to see a shift in JaVale's defensive numbers and overall contribution which may have affected his confidence a bit. The Lakers were no longer desperate to keep him on the floor as much as possible and could just go to Chandler if JaVale wasn't performing. They started relying more on their small ball units to get back in games and the emergence of Avica Zubac kind of negated the need for JaVale's presence even after he returned from sickness. After the Lakers traded Zubac and had to put JaVale back in the starting five, he eventually lost his place again. The athleticism and rim protection that he was showing so much of early on just hasn't been needed, and that could be a systematic adjustment, but a large part of it has to be because he hasn't played well. The other Laker who's disappointed this season is KCP, who's consistently been inconsistent all season long. The easiest way to look at this is through his shooting numbers through every month of the season. He shot well from 3 in December at 41%, but besides that, every single month has been below 35%, and so far in March, he's shooting just 17%. The most consistent thing he's done this season has been not missing a single game, which you have to give a lot of credit to him for staying healthy, but considering one of the main things he was re-signed for was shooting, he has to be looked at as disappointing. He was the only quote-unquote shooter that the Lakers gave a contract to this summer, and for the season he's only shot 34% from three, which is down from his previous 38%. He's also shown signs all season that he's not been the same player as he was last season. Last season he started every game he played in, and the first sign that he wasn't the same player as he was was when he got benched for Josh Hart in the first three games. Now not just KCP is having an offseason from three, Kyle Kuzma, Josh Hart, and even Reggie Bullock, just as he came over, have all shot well below their previous percentages. The thing for Kuzma and Hart is you can tell they put in the work even if their shot isn't falling that night. Bullock also came over mid-season and doesn't really have a large enough sample size to be considered disappointing. There's been far too many games where KCP just doesn't have it going, and that causes him to play poorly on defense or not do the little things like boxing out his man. Now even though JaVale and KCP have been disappointing, it wouldn't be surprising if the Lakers brought back one or both of them next season. Besides the heavy money that KCP was given, neither of them were really outlandish signings. It was guys like Rondo and Lance that didn't really fit with LeBron in the young core. To avoid making the same mistake as they did in the offseason, they should use their money on more reliable pieces that actually fit in with their core players. They have $43 million to use on a very deep 2019 free agency class that goes well beyond just the max level guys. There should be no excuse for them to fail in free agency this time around. That's all I have for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more Lakers content like like this then make sure you subscribe and drop a like if you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching